Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. And if it's the first time you're visiting, please like, subscribe and share. And thank you for welcoming me into your space and you're more than welcome into mine. Um, I do tend to talk about different subjects and today I'm going to be talking about um, Nigeria closing their borders to neighbouring countries. And there's a big hoo-ha about it because the neighbouring countries are really, um, I won't say suffering yet, but it's costing them a lot of money. What was happening, um, especially with Benin and Ghana, they were getting rice, among other things, from Southeast Asia. And you know, Southeast Asia, they can produce things very cheaply. And what they were doing, as I understand it, was they were buying rice from Southeast Asia and then they were repackaging it in Benin and then they could sell it really cheaply. And so they were loading up their, um, their little stock cupboards with rice. Now, because of the closing of the border, they can't do that. And what um, the Prime Minister or the President of Africa is saying is that he doesn't want any imports from Southeast Asia, in particular the rice, because it's contaminated. He's saying that, you know, when it's, when it's grown in the same area for four to six years, it gets laced with arsenic and then arsenic can produce cancer. So he doesn't want that rice coming into the country, which is understandable because um, sometimes we do see these videos. I don't know how, sh how um, true they are, but it shows um, people in Asia um, creating rice. And I don't know how they create it, but it does show us that they're doing it and whether it's a fake video or not, it does leave you feeling a bit sceptical when you think it's coming from China or wherever they're buying it from. Anyway, so everyone's up in arms and they're wondering why Nigeria would, you know, this well, it's kind of not disenfranchised, but they're really um, putting their fellow Africans in a tricky situation. Before, there was this kind of informal labour um, trading arrangement. And so, I guess, by informal, it meant that they were kind of doing things undercover. And so, even though Nigeria knew that they were kind of smuggling rice, they kind of um, threw a blind eye. But now, um, I don't know what's happened. I, I've got a funny feeling there's someone else behind it, because I don't understand why all of a sudden it's been formalized and I don't want to think that this is going to create a civil war but I kind of wonder to myself you're going to disenfranchise your neighboring Africans Benin, Ghana, Gabon, um, Central Africa and all West Africa you're going to disadvantage them because they cannot now trade and yet you know, you've allowed your um, your colonizers over the years to oppress you. And now you're oppressing countries that are already very weak. They're going to, they can't repay loans. Apparently they can't send their kids to school because they haven't got the money. Their businesses are failing because they can't import the goods. Apparently, um, Nigeria is producing rice but they can only produce 50 percent of what is needed and it's like it's costing locals 60 to 100 percent more to buy and so that's not putting locals in a very stable position so on the, what did that happen so on the one hand you I'm kind of thinking to myself why um why would Nigeria put themselves in that position. I understand they're trying to avoid smuggling because that is the main thing. They said there's a lot of drug smuggling, a lot of rice smuggling, vehicle smuggling, human trafficking. And that is what they're trying to put a stop to. I can understand that. But when you think of other countries around the world who have massive smuggling going on, do they close their borders? They don't. I mean, America was talking about building a wall. Yes, they've got 
some I don't know what kind of border force they have preventing people from coming in but they haven't shut off trade from neighboring countries so Nigeria needs to know what it's doing and who is he or who is she I don't know what you call what gender the country is but who are they listening to apparently um, Shinzo Abe he's the Jap Japanese um, Prime Minister, he's talking about they've created this cooperation agreement called NAPSO, which is about nation building, peacekeeping in Nigeria or in Africa. And they're saying that, you know, they will be cooperating and they will be mediating and stuff like that. I don't know if that's got anything to do with it. I don't know whether they've said, you know, we're investing so much into the country, we can't afford to lose. But what the sad thing is, is that, yes, they've got border guards there. Yes, people can't trade officially. But on one of the videos I saw, one of the guys said, oh, if I've got extra money, they'll let me in. They will let me get through. They'll get my product in. But before that, they didn't have no consignment fees. Now it looks like, they, it, it, you know, it's bent on corruption. So... On the one hand, I can, it would be great if it was really about um, stopping the import of foreign goods and just using your own to be self-sufficient and not relying on imports. But if you're going to exploit your own people by charging or taking money under, under, under the table, then that isn't fair. Because you're, you're jeopardising their little bit of profit. They can't make the little bit of profit that they would have done. And it's a waste of time them even getting, getting the stuff in the first place. So it does have wider implications because when you're thinking about oil can't get through, lots of things is going to mean it could mean, I don't know how much we get from Nigeria, but it does mean that things increase in price. And you have to ask yourself, is Nigeria thinking strategically? Is it the best thing to do? And if it is the best thing to do, you need to take corrupt border guards off of, off of your payroll because you, you lose credibility and you're not, gonna, you're not going to succeed if you're, see, if you're seen to be corrupt. Anyway, I wrote down a few little bits. Um, Said that, um, said that, problem for informal trade. Yeah, I was saying that, you know, before they put that, um, stop the, they closed the border, there was a lot of informal trade, but the informal trade is what makes the African countries prosperous. You know, everybody does a little bit undercover. That's how you make your money. And so to formalise that, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing the other countries a disservice. Black people should stick together. I don't know who Nigeria is listening to. I understand the principle. Great. Don't get your rice from um, Asia. That's great. Produce your own, your own rice. But then it should be cheaper, not more expensive for the locals to buy it. And, you know, they should be able to benefit from this change, not be worse off. And the neighbouring countries should be able to benefit and not be worse off. Then it would be a good idea. But if you're disadvantaging and exploiting your fellow Africans, and the people who should be exploited are getting off scot-free as usual, that is not good. What else did I write down? Nigeria claims um, it is it is turning its back on foreign imports, yet locals are paying border guards enough money so they can smuggle it in. Locals lose profit. I've said that. I've said that. Oh, yeah, Nigeria is saying that they don't want to rely on imports, yet they've signed an Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, and I'm sure that's going to involve um, imports. So what is the point? You're going to put down your fellow Africans, let them struggle, leave them without what you know, leave them without employment, leave them without income, impoverish them. You're going to be responsible for that, Nigeria. And yet 
it down the road you're still going to end up doing the same thing so what is the point you really need to support your own okay if they're smuggling a little bit here and there smuggling a little bit there i mean what's the difference between them smuggling a little bit in in now and then and your border guards taking money for them to smuggle it in what is the difference so you should not really be looking to you know spoil the lives of your fellow africans you should be sticking together regardless of what anybody says that's my concern that you're going to end up fighting each other which is what the you know what the powers that be want they want black people to be head to head that's the only time they're happy they can't manage it they can't they can't um kill millions and millions of africans they can't manage that regardless of all the guns regardless of all the artillery they want you to kill yourselves so think ahead be strategic like i said that shimzo abi Prime Minister of Japan states that he is helping Africa foster peace and stability under a new approach for peace and stability in Africa, aka NAPSA. Sounds good on paper, but if it's embedded with corruption, what is the point? So that's why I said closing the border reminds me of Trump. And I was wondering how come no other countries experiencing smuggling is closing their borders. You've got Colombia, you've got Afghanistan, you've got Cuba even america they're all smuggling how come they're not closing their borders africa use your brain nigeria i mean use your brain they're not closing their borders to stop smuggling so why are you closing yours and preventing trade from coming in i think it's a trap so Mohammed Wahari, president of and customs official, claimed that the border closure is to secure maritime land and borders against smugglers. But what did Jamaica do? Jamaica signed a bilateral agreement with America. They haven't closed their borders to neighbouring countries. And yet they, they, they're trying to prevent the same thing. They're trying to prevent smuggling and drug trafficking. But they signed an agreement with USA and they're absolutely fine. Why Nigeria? Why don't you do the same thing? This is not something you can do by yourself. You need other African countries. You're all one body. Division is weakness. Remember that. Whatever the powers that be or the systems in place can do to divide and conquer, that is what they will do. And you've got to be careful, Nigeria, that that is not what's happening here. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. Your comments would be appreciated. Bye-bye.